¿Así o con bufanda? Bufanda, yo creo, para que se note que hace frío. ¿Dices en serio? Yo creo, sí, veamos. ¿Sí? This is the EOS M, it's the first version, it's not the two, the three, or whatever. It's the EOS M, period. Uh, it's actually a camera that I'm filming with right now. We have two copies. We have the one that I'm using, which is like my copy, and this is Fran's copy, so I'm showing you the other one. Now, for the price, I don't think you can find a better video camera at all. All right, so I was editing the video and I realized I never talked about the RAW file. So I'm going to show you some RAW files on the camera and how the colors are straight out of the camera and I'm going to also show you how they look once I post-process them. 
Now this is how I like my pictures to look, but this is completely personal. Some people hate it. Um, every once in a while I get like hate comments on the channel like, oh, what do you do with the colors? This is terrible. It looks horrible. The straight out of camera pictures look much better. Uh, but hey, if you prefer the straight off camera colors, then if it rocks your boat, that's awesome. Just uh, shoot and, and use the file straight off camera. Also, every time I post a video about like shooting digital cameras, there's always somebody asking how I process my pictures. I don't feel like I want to make a video about like post-processing. There's so many tutorials online and if you know how to use Lightroom, you can really easily replicate what I do. Uh, but yeah, I just want to show you the files, how it looks straight off camera and how my files looked so you can compare and see the difference between the camera and the user and the gap in between. So yeah, once I've said all of this, uh, let's keep rolling with the review, which is mostly focused on the video aspect of this camera. When I first purchased this camera, I purchased it because it was the cheapest you can go uh, and the better video quality you could get without going full frame uh, at that time. So the video is the same as the 7D or some other uh, more expensive Canons, but just on this really small package. Um, this lens, the 22 millimeter f2, is it's a good lens. It's a really great lens. It's the lens that I use to film almost all my videos, except the last ones that I've been using, uh, the 28 millimeter 1.8. But aside from, I don't know, the last three, videos that I've been posting. All the other ones are shot with the uh, 22 f2 and it's a great lens. The camera overall it's great. Um, I don't use it that much for taking pictures though. I use it almost exclusively for shooting video and it's great for that. But I also wanted to make this episode to prove to you guys that you can actually use it for uh, photography because it's a great camera. Now I'm using the 28mm 1.8 with a speed booster and a speed booster what it does is you grab your 28mm and you put on a speed booster which is basically like an add-on with a lens in it and then you attach that to your camera. And in this case uh, the Canon EOS M has a, a crop factor of 1.6 but when you put the speed booster uh, that crop factor is gone and you see the 28 millimeter as a 28 millimeter. So you basically get a full frame camera uh, with this adapter and it's it's a game changer. Like for me, that was a game changer. The crop factor was not really fun. I used to shoot with the 50 millimeter 1.4 FD lens and I always felt like it was too long and sure it renders nicely, but it's almost like an 80 millimeter. So it wasn't really fun to use, but with the speed booster, now I can shoot on 50 millimeter and it's like a native 50 millimeter or 28 in this case. Uh, and it looks like a 28 and it's, that's just, amazing it's the best thing of course you lose your autofocus and you can't if, if you're using a, a modern canon lens like the one i'm using right now uh these modern canon lenses like the usm lenses and whatnot um you cannot stop them down because you have to stop them with the electronic body so the only way to stop it down is to attach it to the body and then stop the lens down and then deattach the lens and put it here or do what I do, which is put an ND filter on top of it and then just adjust the ND filter accordingly to the amount of light that you want to let in to your sensor. And that's what I do. A lot of people ask me in the comment section if I use this camera with magic lantern or which settings do I use or whatever. Man, I just put this camera on standard mode and take a video. Part of me in a way, wants to prove that you can use this camera without adding anything to it. Uh, probably the speed booster is the only thing that I would add, but as like right out of the box, you can use it perfectly for all your video purposes or your uh, photography purposes. That's the reason why I was shooting this video. Of course, this wouldn't be my uh, first choice for shooting a professional photo shoot, but since the guys were my friends and I just wanted to make a video and they asked me a favor for it. I said, okay, I'm going to use the USM and see how it goes. And I'm pretty happy with the results. I hope you enjoy them too. The guys were really happy with the pictures. Um, so that's what counts at the end of the day. Uh, if the person you're taking the pictures to is happy with the results, that's, that's awesome. I don't shoot digital that much uh, or at all. 
Uh, and when I do, I use my Leica M8. I don't use my Canon EOS M by any means. I just use it for video. Now, would I recommend you getting the EOS M? Well, it depends, like everything. The big drawback that I have with this camera is that it has no, uh, it has no screen. Uh, I mean, it has a screen. It has no screen that you can flip up and watch yourself. So for example, on the moment of recording this video, I'm using an external monitor in which I can see myself and I can see if I'm in focus because in the past, I used to record my videos and I had no idea if I was in focus or not. So some of my videos looked like this <laughs> and I had no way of uh, seeing if that was correct. So now, for example, I'm watching myself and I can create a focus and I can just do it like so. The newer versions of the EOS M have a flippable screen, which will be much comfortable to use uh, than having an external monitor, which is not a big monitor, it's like a thing like this big, but it's over there anyway. Um, so that will be much comfortable. But as it is, like a one-man setup for shooting random stuff or, I don't know, doing your really independent, you know, uh, short films, it's a great tool. I think it's, it's revolutionary, the, the, the possibility you can have a camera like that size. It fits on your pocket, uh, it records full HD. Um, yeah, it records full HD, it's not 4K. Uh, by the time it went on sale, HD was the thing. Four friends have asked me about which film camera should they purchase uh, because they want to, I don't know, take some videos about their vacations and whatnot. And I always said, you should get, in my humble opinion, an EOS M because it's super cheap, it's great, uh, and you can really use it to its full potential if you spend some time with it. And I showed them my videos and I said, this is what you can achieve. You only have to invest some time in learning how to use the tool. Um, and invariably, everybody who has purchased this camera, uh, they have never unlocked the full potential of it. I guess uh, they, they really wanted an easier camera to use. And this camera is, even though it's easy, um, you need to know its limitations. So it, it, the, the out of focus on video is not really working. <laughs> uh, you gotta manually focus the videos, which for me is fine, but for some people it's, it's a hassle. Um, yeah, and as a, as a photo camera, it's not really amazing, as I already said. So it has a lot of limitations, but uh, to me, in, in my perspective, limitations really help you creatively. So I know that every time I travel with this camera, I need to be super aware of its limitations and how to work around them. Uh, and I'm fine with that. I have a lot of fun using this camera, but I can understand why some people are not very big fans of it. Um, I tend to use limited equipment in order to push myself further. Uh, of course, I would love to have some, the new, I don't know, Sony A7 Beta Plus, whatever the new model is, uh, that shoots at whatever, 80,000K or whatever the case, but, um, but I'm happy with this. And if anything happens to it, I'm not really sad or worried about it. Like for example, this, can, this, this, this other model that we have, the lens is almost falling apart, as you can tell, and it's, it's not a problem. Like, oh, well, if it falls apart, it's fine. Like the lens was super cheap and the camera is super cheap too. Uh, we've been using it for years and this is the first time that something uh, is showing like, oh my God, it's, it's starting to fail, but it's starting to fail after, what, five years? Man, five years of constant use and abuse and just now it's having like some issues. I can easily put some glue in it. I have no problems investing like 150 pounds to get a camera that will last for five years without giving me a single issue. That's amazing. I'm sorry if I'm drying this for too long, but once you buy a speed booster and you start using manual lenses uh, on the EOS M, it feels like having a really compact 5D Mark II. Now I know it doesn't have the same dynamic range, of course it doesn't, but for the little money that you invest on the camera and the many benefits that it has, I think it's great. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you, man. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions regarding this camera, just let me know. I'll be happy to answer anything. Um, that's it. That's all I have to say. I want to, as always, give a big shout to my patrons because they always help me and support the channel and without them, this channel would be absolutely impossible to uh, keep moving forward because I'm always trying new cameras and like trying to come up with new reviews for you guys and I hope you enjoy the effort and everything that goes into every single one of the episodes. And I'm gonna stop talking because I'm dragging it for too long. Uh, I hope you have an amazing week and I will see you 
next week with another episode and until then just keep shooting guys <laughs>